Shout out to all the fierce warriors out there. This is your new host, Samantha Jean, and I would love to welcome you back to the Victorious Christian Radio Ministry, where every week we learn how to victoriously fight the good fight of faith as fierce kingdom warriors enlisted in God's mighty army. So I'm super excited for this week's broadcast. We've been talking about demolishing strongholds. And last week we talked about idolatry and spiritual adultery. Uh, the week before that we talked about covetousness and discontentment. We've talked about fear, anxiety, anger, all those different things. So many different strongholds. And so this week we are going to be talking about lust. Now, lust is something that you know so many people are battling with right now. And so I think it's important that we address this. And again, we have Pastor David Wilson and Renee Wilson on. We are doing this together, right? We are demolishing Amen. these yeah, strongholds together. Yeah. So there's power uh, when we do it together. Amen. Amen. So thank you all for being on again. So praise God. Praise God. Amen. Excited to be on the broadcast again. We're really enjoying tearing down these strongholds, amen. And I'm amen. thankful that God does tell us that there is strength in numbers. It says yeah. a threefold cord is not easily broken. And that one of the keys to God's people getting victory is their willingness to come together and be in agreement. The Bible says the two of you agree touching anything on earth that shall be done in heaven. Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And right now we're just doing exactly that. We're using the power of prayer, we're using the power of God's word, and we're coming together for the purpose of tearing down these strongholds. And the Bible tells us that our weapons are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. And although we live in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Yeah. And this is how we go to war with the enemy. We use God's truth. We use prayer. We use yeah. praise. I mean, we've been saying on some of these broadcasts, we use the power of worship to be able to bring down these strongholds. And I'm excited about bringing this one down because this is one that... Uh, it has so many different forms and so many different facets, and we really don't uh, understand just how many ways that lust can get a hold of our lives. And so I'm excited about tearing down the stronghold. Yeah, praise God. So first of all, you know, I would love for us to just talk a little bit. What is lust? You know, there's so many different things that go along with this. So first of all, what is lust? And then we're going to talk about, you know, how to overcome this lust and all that. I mean, I did look up the word and define it, you know, and it, and it said longing, desire, eagerness to possess. It even said concupiscence, which is like uh, coveting after, you know, carnal things and having a desire for even sexual pleasures and just yeah. unlawful type of de depraved affections. Um, but as I was studying, I did go a little bit further into it. And really, lust is, is not being satisfied with the physical and the spiritual sustenance that God gives us. Yeah. And, and, you know, I just really, um, that, that really resonated well with me as I studied this out. And, you know, just not being satisfied with what God gives. And I take it even a little bit further um, because the Bible says in a couple different places, you know, that they did whatsoever was right in their eyes. And every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Yeah. And I really think that that is a, a great definition of lust, you right. know? Yeah, 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 amen. And I guess that would probably be my, uh, my, my definition of wealth to some degree, but it's maybe a lot simpler. It's just that, you know. It's just an unlawful desire for something that you don't have, you know what I mean? It's yeah. a, or, or a desire for something you shouldn't have, right? And, and a lot of times it's just that desire that isn't a God-given desire, right? Because there yeah. are God-given desires. Those aren't yes. lust. And so, uh, but everything else would be a lust and it can be anything. So just that unlawful desire for something you don't have or something yeah. you shouldn't have. So Yeah, thank you for sharing. You know, in one of our broadcast we talked about discontentment right mm -hmm, yeah. and you know so many of these strongholds just coincide right? right you know it's important that we demolish this in jesus mighty name Amen. second peter talks about knowing this first that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts mm -hmm. and you know we see even in the the younger generations coming up after us like yeah. just so much lust right yeah. so much uh, even porn, so much uh, sexual sin, so right. much of it is out there, and you know people don't know how to overcome it. They right. don't know yeah. how to. They they don't even talk about it honestly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Like you know, a lot of lust is behind closed doors. Like people don't see that stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's a huge issue that needs to be addressed. So. It, it really mm -hmm. does, yeah. And, and you know, we live in such a sexually orientated uh, society. And yeah. It's like, and we're and and, and, and society is pushing this. You know, I mean, we see it in our school. Schools. We see it uh, in, in the world that we live. We see it in the music. We see it in the media. Yeah. And everybody's trying to push this sexual agenda. You know, I mean, that's the sexual form of lust, right? But that's yeah. a big problem, right? But there's also yeah. 
all these other things. It's like it's like they use they use that lustful spirit, that lustful situation to sell you a donut. They use it to sell you a yeah. car part. They use it to sell you a soda. And everything is about you know uh, some individual that they're going to use to try to get us to you know feed that desire, right? But then yeah. there's the other things we lust for. There's the lust of money. There's the lust of power. Lust of prestige mm-hmm. lust of a you know all these other different lusts that we can give for and i think that uh, you know some people have that blood lust you know what i mean that they, they just they you know that we know what those murderers and serial killers and stuff like that and so yeah. it comes in all different types and forms and, and and so that's what i'm saying it can go anywhere but we just definitely live in a very lustful society and america is quickly becoming uh what i would consider a modern day rome uh, what rome was in its day is what america is in our day yeah. is now because everything is just about all about pleasing myself and pleasing right, yeah. me and that's where that lust comes from yeah i was thinking the same thing you know it's really that if you you think about what it says in first john 2 you know um the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life it's so much of satisfying self right you know what what is it that i want to build myself right i want to build my kingdom i want to be something and it's it's so much of just like people trying to build themselves in their kingdom up and you know ultimately uh, Christians especially, because you can't really say it about the lost because they're not on their way to heaven, but those people who are on their way to heaven, they're going to stand before Christ one day, mm-hmm. empty-handed yeah, right? of all exactly. crowns and of all rewards because instead of building his kingdom and trying to be more like him, they're mm-hmm. they're trying to use God for their benefit. Right. Build me. Give me more. Do more for me. I mean, that mm-hmm. is a huge thing right now in the church. Mm-hmm. Me, me, me. Right, right. Yeah. right. yeah. Bad lust. Yeah, definitely. Uh, pride of life, right? Yeah. Pride is such a huge root cause to so many different things. And right. so, you know, one of the broadcasts we talked about pride. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, it, it, it's an abomination of God. And yeah. so for those that are out there and they are struggling with specifically lust, what would you say to them? You know, maybe perhaps a personal story, testimony, something that the Lord delivered you from or even a biblical example. I would love for you all to share that. Well, okay, I was thinking back of a time um, in my life where it was, it was for whatever reason, for wrong reasons, let's not say for whatever reasons, it was for wrong reasons that I really did want to be the focus of attention in the room. And I had wrong desires to be, to when I would walk into a room, you know, the Bible says lust not after her beauty, right? And I think women sometimes really greatly struggle with wanting to be lusted after if that if we're just going to be honest we want to feel desired at times we want to feel some kind of way and that was something that i struggled with i wanted to be able to walk into a room and have every single person's attention focus on me like that was a goal of mine and that's wicked that's wrong you know and that's being a stumbling block even to other people like how prideful rude and wrong i mean that's just a personal example of my own yeah, thank you for sharing that. And, uh, of course, you know, uh, I can go back several different times and things that, you know, you lust for and th- lust that you deal with, especially growing up the way that I did. You know, I was uh, subjected to a lot of different things that, you know, children shouldn't be subjected to. At a very early age, I can remember as young as maybe even three and four years old finding magazines that would have pictures in them that no child should be looking at. And, uh Later on, you'd find videotapes. By the time I was like nine or ten, I think maybe even eight, you know, I was, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, able to, you know, view pornography, and of course that puts all those visions in your head. And then as you grow up and you're around that environment all the time, so so I, I could say there's lots of different lusts there, and that's that's yeah. that's the sexual kind, right? But then there's also uh, the lust that I had for drugs and alcohol. You know, I, I mean, definitely desired it, like with an, uh, you know, and those are things that you shouldn't desire, and yeah. and, and to the point where. You know, even when I had been delivered and even when I had victory from it, I would be thinking about it and desiring it and making future dates where I would give place to this thing. And that's a lust, and I'm giving into that lust. And see, the problem with lust is like we all know where the Bible says that ends yeah. up. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It doesn't, you, you can't sit there and just, there, there is something wrong with longing for it, there is mm-hmm. something wrong with wanting it. And I know we're going to give some biblical examples. Yeah. I'm sure that maybe you've got something, Personal Sam, as well. So. Oh, possibly. yeah. Yeah, praise God. Honestly, you know, I battled with porn. It was more sexual sin for me. And so, you know, I, I know there's a younger generation out there that mm-hmm. is exposed yeah, to so yeah, much that we probably don't even know. And, you know, porn was something that I was exposed to at a young age. Mm-hmm. I had seen it on a TV. Man, that just leads you down the broad path leading to destruction. Amen. to say that. And yeah. when you're in the midst of it, you're like, man, how am I going to get over this? Like, right. how am I? Because you just lust after it. Right. You desire it. Mm-hmm. You, you know, you just... 
it's so hard to get out of it. But I want you to know that if you're battling with that right now, Jesus Christ can literally deliver you from that. Amen. He did it for me, and he's no respecter of persons, and That's I know right. that he can do it for you. Yeah. And so, you know, you just got to press into Jesus. We're going to talk more about this after, but honestly, just pressing into Jesus, you know, confessing it to him and asking him to help you through that. And he will indeed. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah. Praise God. <laughs> definitely, yeah. definitely that was a struggle for me. But the Lord delivered me. So praise God. <laughs> yeah. and, and it's one of those struggles too, you know. And so we're talking about it. And we're talking about how this younger generation is dealing with it. And yeah. it's everywhere, right? And so uh, I'm thankful that God delivered me from all that. And delivered mm-hmm. me from the lifestyle I was living. Delivered me from the desire to... Uh, but you've got to, you've got to, uh, you got to make sure that you would deal with these things. Yeah. Just like you said, you do got to press into Christ. You do got to turn around. You do got to go the other way. You do got to make sure that you know you begin to develop not not new not lust but desires, right? Yeah. And, the, and the right desires. And, and yeah. desire is okay as long as it comes from God, right? But yeah. lust is not okay ever. Right. You got to you got to recognize this is something I'm lusting for. And I need to deal with it before it becomes something yeah. I give into because it, it be, that there's a small window between lust and sin. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, that window is where you got to deal with that thing and nip it in the bud, so to speak, before it becomes something you're, you're, you're dealing with on the outside. So uh, yeah. that being said, now I'm going to, if it's okay, Based jump yes. into uh, <laughs> a man that had a big problem with lust. Amen. Yep. Uh, and that is going to be King Solomon. King Solomon, wisest man ever live on the earth besides Jesus Christ. Uh, God gave him uh, wisdom, and because of what he prayed for, which is a very smart prayer, he asked for wisdom. That's all he asked for, to lead God's people. God said, I'm not just going to give you wisdom. I'm going to give you uh, the, the the world power. I'm going to give you wealth. I'm going to give you all these other things inside it. And and he had everything, but he allowed lust to be able to begin to take over him. And God told them uh, when he was when they were kings, said, don't go and multiply unto yourself chariots and horses and, and gold and all these things. And these are all things that, that Solomon must have obviously lusted for because he went directly against God's word to do it. Yeah. Uh, it said not to multiply to yourselves wives and women, uh, not to marry certain women from certain lands. And I'm saying that he must have lusted for these things because this is what it says yeah. in, in 1 Kings chapter 10. It says that in one year, and I, and I thought this has always got me, that one year it says, Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was 603 score and six talents of gold. That's 666. And you're not going to tell me that that lust did not come from the devil, amen. Yeah. That, that wasn't God. That wasn't the devil trying to, because he already had plenty of gold, and he didn't have to do that. Not only that, but it goes on to say because God told him not to go back down to to Egypt to get anything. But Solomon was getting all kinds of things from Egypt. Now Egypt was a no no for God's people. They were not to go back there at all for anything. Told them that from the moment that they came out, and this is what it says. Uh, in verse number 28 of the same chapter, and Solomon had horses brought out of Egypt and linen yarn. The king's merchants received the linen at a yarn, a yarn at a price. And a chariot came up out and went out of Egypt for 600 shekels of silver and a horse for 150. And so for all the kings of the Hittites and for all the kings of Syria did they bring them out by their means. And so they were bringing uh, Solomon all these chariots. And now, as if that wasn't enough, Solomon's already getting the chariots and the horses and the linens, getting the gold. Uh, but look at what he says about the women. And God said not to multiply wives unto yourself. And here's what Solomon did. I uh, talk about lust. Had he and he had seven hundred wives. <laughs> and just stop there, okay? Ooh. You got a you got a problem, bro. Yeah. Uh, princes, princesses with the wives, and three hundred concubines, and his wife turned away his heart. Okay, and then it goes on to say that it got worse. Now he's not just wives. Now he's starting to lust after other gods because if you read a little bit further, it talks about how Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians. And after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And, and so all that, and this is what happened. Again, your your lust eventually will turn into sin. And your sin will cause you to lose some things, cause some things to die. And what died for him was the kingdom because it says, And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned away from the Lord, God of Israel, which was appeared unto him twice. And had commanded him concerning this thing that he should not go after other gods. But he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee and will give it to, to thy servants. And so uh, just amazing how much uh, how much he gave in to things he was lusting for. I mean, he just yeah. basically didn't withhold anything. I mean, I, I mean, one, two, three, four, seven hundred. 
Yeah. Uh, 300 concubines, uh, princesses. I mean, he just was like whatever he wanted, right? And I mean, yeah. it's just uh, giving into every single dis- lust. Amen. So. Yeah, thank you for sharing Amen. that. What about you, Renee? Do you have biblical example? Yeah, I do. And um, I'll start by just saying is really, you know, the lust comes from within us. You mm-hmm. know, it's a heart yeah. problem, a flesh problem, a man mm-hmm. problem. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> which yeah. we'll see, you know. And so I'm reading my example out of Exodus chapter 16. And God had just a little four story delivered um, the Israelites out of Egypt and they were in the wilderness of sin and going through it and the people said he says and the children of Israel said unto them would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and when we did eat bread to the full for you have brought us forth unto this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger and those people begin to complain and get, um, you know, just upset over what God had given them. Right, yeah. And we see a little bit more in that story in Psalm 81. He said, uh, but my people would not hearken to my voice and Israel would none of me. So I gave them up unto their own heart's lust and they walked in their own counsels. And then just a little bit more of that story. It says, and while the flesh was yet between their teeth. Ere it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote the people with a very great plague, and called the name of the place Kibroth Hataava, because they there they buried the people that lusted. Wow. You know, again, this is a problem that we all have, right. which is yeah. why we need to quickly address it. You know, yeah. 1 Corinthians 10, 6 tells us that these things are written for our examples. Amen. You know, yeah, so, okay, God. God's given us a book full of warnings right yeah. he's told us that hey these these wrong desires come from your heart yeah. and it's up to us to take notice immediately you know when you start to notice um that your thoughts uh that they're not right that there's any inclination whatsoever of them being wrong or sinful mm-hmm. then it's we have to do what's necessary amen to yeah. avoid yeah, that you know God. what yeah. to protect ourselves to protect those around us uh to protect our testimony and to keep our relationship right with god like amen. Yeah. he said you you know, you have a problem, but I am the answer. Right. So how yeah. about we just keep going to him for the answers Amen. instead of giving place to our sure. lust? I was thinking when yeah. you were giving, when you were talking, Sam, how probably most of people's problem is instead of fighting the lust, they're giving into it yeah. wholeheartedly. Like instead of fighting it, we're just giving into yeah. it. So yeah. you know, just like Solomon. Amen. So yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's like he obviously was not fighting it at all. Right. <laughs> I mean, when you guys see when you're at that thousand plus women, I mean, you're not fighting your lust. You're just because you're right. just moving a minute all in, whoever you want. So yeah, praise God. praise God. Thank you for sharing that. I love how the Lord gives us these biblical examples, you know. And you know, I was thinking this morning, the two examples that came to mind were David and Bathsheba. You right. Know? David one, yeah. sees Bathsheba, you know, on the um, top of the building. And, you know, he lusts after her, and then he ends up taking action on that lust. Right. And he ends up sleeping mm-hmm. with her, and, you know, we know <laughs> right. that leads to destruction. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And yeah. it doesn't just affect you. It affects uh, so many other people right. that Jesus Amen. wants you yeah. to reach, right? Yeah. And so, you know, I think when when we're in the midst of it, we're prideful. Right. We're mm-hmm. selfish. Yeah. And we only Amen. think they're of ourselves. Selfish. Amen. But really, it ends up hurting so many people because mm-hmm. the Lord wants to reach people through each and every one of us. That's right. And yeah. So, you know, that was that was the wrong example, right? He gave in to that temptation. Right. So then I was thinking of uh, Joseph and Potiphar's wife, right? Genesis 39, it talks about how Joseph was a goodly person, right? He was well-favored. He was right. a handsome man. But he ends up in Potiphar's house. He ends up being the overseer of his house, you know, because... Potiphar sees this man has so much favor from God and right, all yeah. that. Everyone in the house is getting blessed, you know, because of Joseph being there. You know, I want to go down to verse 12 uh, where it talks about Potiphar's wife. And it says, she caught him by his garment saying, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him and got him out. So Joseph literally did not give in to that temptation. Amen. Yeah. Uh, before that, he even talks about how she literally... I was asking him to sleep with her uh, over and over and over again daily. (laughs) And he kept saying no. He refused it. He refused that temptation. But this time it talks about how he fled. (laughs) He's like, I am out of here. And sometimes we got to do that, guys. We got to get rid of those things that are tempting us. Amen. You know, because temptation will ultimately lead to sin. If we dwell on those thoughts.
thoughts, right? That's right. It starts mm-hmm. with the eyes, right? I think of Bath- Bathsheba. Mm-hmm. <laughs> started with the lust of the eyes. And then he ended up taking action on that because, you know, we get the thoughts in our minds. We dwell on those thoughts. And then we end up taking that action. Right. And that's mm-hmm. where it really it causes us to sin, right? Amen. Absolutely. Yeah. And so those are the biblical examples that the Lord gave me. Yeah, so. praise God. I think also it's funny you were talking about specific things and it made me think about Matthew 5 when they were questioning Jesus about, you know, you have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. You know, but I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. This was how serious he took it. He said, and if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off, cast it from thee. That casting away, that like whatever that temptation is, whatever that lust is, whatever it is. Get rid of it. Yeah. yeah. Cut it off. Cast it away. Like, yeah. do away with it. Yeah. Amen. And, and I love that you brought out the right thing to do. I mean, there's, yeah. there's, there's, we got plenty of bad examples. We love how the Bible yeah. gives us examples. Hey, this is what not to do, and this is what to do. You yep. know, first of all, he constantly kept his God in mind. You know, and Joseph yeah. had no problem doing that. He said, I'm not going to sin against my God. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and that was big for him. You know what I mean? And I think us keeping our God in mind as much as possible. That You know, I think about having on the helmet of salvation. Yeah. And remind us, that, oh yeah, don't forget, you're a child of God. Don't yeah. forget, you're saved. Don't forget, you're you're a believer. You can't just do what everybody else does because you know right. any other servant in the house. Yeah. Just saying, it was obviously a problem. Well, and I say that it was a problem because he told him, you can have everything but my wife. Yeah. And so that tells me that she had a problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that he knew she had a problem, and uh, that you know he, that he needed to let Joseph know my wife has a problem. I don't want you sleeping with my wife. Yeah. Uh, and I just think it's something to keep in mind that, you know, yeah, we, yeah, there's a right way to handle things. He kept God in mind and he was, he made sure to, uh, he did his, he did what he's supposed to do. And then when she yeah. got a hold of him, he did what he had to do. He ran, you know what I mean? I think yeah. it was some good stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Praise God. You know, I think of James one where it talks about temptation, right? Mm-hmm, it says, yeah. blessed is the man that endureth temptation for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which mm-hmm. the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Amen. Let no man say when... Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither temp- tempteth he any man. Amen. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust right, and yeah. enticed. Right, yeah. Then when the lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Now we know mm-hmm. in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, mm-hmm. right? So right. sin is always going to lead you down that broad path Amen. of destruction. Yeah, if we do not keep short counts of sin, man, it's going to lead us down that broad path. Path Amen. leading yeah. to destruction. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's important that we get rid of these temptations, that we flee from it, that we run like Joseph did. Yeah. Amen. Because man, it, it's it's not good. <laughs> no, it's not good. And you know, one of our principles for our residents, and I yeah. know that you get to help with them from times, and we have our, our 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 victory discipleship on Friday nights, and we have the principles that we share with them in our conquerors classes. And one of those principles is do not underestimate the power of temptation. Yeah. And I think it's something to think about that really the power of temptation temptation is lust yeah uh, that's what empowers the temptation the devil knows that that's why he he's the tempter and in that same context of what you're talking about the bible tells us that god doesn't tempt any man with evil yeah. but the devil does and the devil will lay that in there and the devil knows i don't have to do anything i just let them use that power yeah. of lust in their life to desire something that they know they shouldn't have or something that they don't have and that that is what empowers that temptation. Yeah. Thank so. you for sharing that. And God always gives us a way out of temptation. He gives us that way of escape. Mm-hmm. But it's up to us whether or not we're gonna take that way right. of escape. Mm-hmm. Well, I know that there's so many people out there that are sure. struggling with this. Mm-hmm. And so for those uh, that are listening, okay, they're like, Man, I'm really battling with lust right now. What would you say would be the number one raw and real truth bomb or a golden nugget that they would be able to take away to help overcome this temptation all right well same right in james and chapter 4 verses 5 it says do you think that the scripture saith in vain the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy and he immediately says but he giveth more grace so number one accept the grace of god immediately Uh, wherefore he saith god resisteth resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble so humble yourself submit yourself to god 
and then resist the devil and he'll flee from you if yes. you're not resisting he's not going anywhere resist him it says draw nigh to god he'll draw nigh to you cleanse your hands you sinners so go ahead and cleanse and confess right then the lust that's coming up against you don't yeah. hide it don't pretend like it's not there don't yeah. don't avoid god <laughs> run to god yes. immediately straight to him and then in the end of that verse it's and the end of those verses it says humble yourselves in the sight of the lord and he shall lift you up so yes. in order for him to lift you up and exalt you you have to follow these um you know these nuggets this this yeah. truth god's word amen praise, praise god. god uh real quick you know i'm going to give you three f's okay? okay if you want to deal with lust and you want to make sure that you're able to demolish it in your life and get rid of it number one it's in second timothy chapter two uh bible says in verse number 15 study to show thyself approved unto god a workman that needeth not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth you need to be faithful you need to be filled with the faith of god uh if the word is what's in the words what's going to come out jesus said make the tree good or make it evil uh goes on to say later on just like we've been talking uh you got to flee also from you for lust you got to fool joseph on those things yeah. on those lusts you those things you run from them and then after that this is the, this is the this is what puts a nail in the coffin uh, you're going to be faithful, you're going to flee you for lust, and then you're going to follow righteousness. If you are constantly going after righteousness, you won't be walking after your lust. And yes. that's the big problem, right? If we're not, but we're not going the right direction, there's only one other direction to go, that's right. and that's yeah. the wrong direction. So make sure you're going the right direction. Yes. Don't, 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 don't give yourself a couple steps backward because mm -hmm. that is going to work out bad for you, and it's not going to work out good. So yeah. use that to destroy that, demolish that lust in your life. Praise God. Thanks you all for sharing. I'm just going to share super quick. Galatians 5 says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill Amen. the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that you would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Amen. So basically, if our desires are leading us to the qualities listed in Galatians 5, which is the fruit of the Spirit, right. love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, then we know... Uh, if, if that's coming out of us, then we know that we're being led by the Spirit, Amen. right? Yeah, right, uh, right? But if our desires are leading us contrary to God's Word, then we know that Satan, right. Satan is behind that, right? Yeah, exactly He's influencing right, yeah. that. So we ought to flee from that. Amen. Amen. Uh, so we are going to pray now to demolish the stronghold of lust. Amen. Father, we come before you right now, Lord, just in the name of Jesus, Lord, and we plead your blood over this time of prayer. And we're asking you, Father, to just demolish this stronghold in the lives of your believers right now. We're praying that you break the grip of lust that it has on many of your believers. Lord, we're praying that you would help them to break free from the chains. And we're asking you, Lord, to just uh, work in this mightily, Father God, Lord. Uh, Lord, you said that if two of you agree touching anything on earth, that shall be done in yes. heaven, Father God, Lord. Right now, we come in agreement when it comes to this uh, this device of the devil, yes. Father God, Lord, this lust, Lord, and I pray that you would just help believers everywhere to break free from yes. the power of lust, Lord. I pray that they'd be able to walk in the glorious liberty uh, of your spirit, Lord, and I'm asking you to do it in Jesus' name, please. I agree. I agree. Uh, our Father, Lord, I come before you right now, and I pray that you would just be using these truths to mightily deal with your people right now. And any Please, everybody Lord. who's dealing with any kind of lust, Lord, I ask that you would just uh, cause them to to hear your words, to to draw near to you, to be filled with your spirit, yes, Lord. Yes, Father. Your word yes. does say that they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust, and that we are to put on you, Lord Jesus, God, help and us not to make you provision on, for yes, the flesh. Please. So, so, Lord, help us. Help us all just to run to you. Yes. First of all, to run to you, run from sin, Lord, um, and crucify every single one of these lusts and ask for your desires so we can wholeheartedly live for you and please, please you and just fin fulfill your perfect will in this life, Lord. Bring down every stronghold, destroy every single lustly, lustly desire that comes up in your people. Help us to completely demolish them, Lord, in Jesus' name. I agree. I agree. Lord, I just pray that you would completely demolish every single wrong desire, yes, every single Lord, lustful uh, thought, every yes, emotion, Lord, Lord, everything that's not of you, Jesus. I pray that you would completely demolish in the mighty demolish name of Jesus. It, Lord. And Lord, I just pray that you would empower your people to just completely crucify the flesh, Lord. I pray that we would walk in the spirit Help us, so that we don't f fulfill the lust of the flesh, Lord. I pray that we would that your fruit would flow out of us, Lord. Yes, Lord. Uh, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temper. Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you would just completely demolish the spirit of lust yes, in the Lord. mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you again for tuning in to the Victorious Christian Radio Ministry, where every week we learn how to victoriously fight the good fight of faith 
as fierce kingdom warriors enlisted in God's mighty army.